guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know me, Gamala Kusim and Kujo, and on today's video, we will be doing a wellness vitality check at Walmart Medical and Wellness Institute. Um, so yeah, come along with me. This one okay. needs to be below 140. This one needs to be below 90, which it is, so that's fine. Okay. But this doesn't mean that you have high blood pressure. What okay. it means is, we need to repeat it again in two minutes time while you're relaxing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is leave the cuff on. Sometimes just putting it on makes you anxious. So if it's already there, then that shouldn't happen, right? Okay. We'll leave it there and we'll go on with this. Just going to ask you to relax this arm for me down here. Sure. Hold it there, like okay. that. I'm trying to relax. Let's see what the blood pressure is this time.
you go. 124 over 80. Perfect. So this is 3.4. 3.4 is normal. It needs to be less than 5. Um, if it was more than 5, we would have drawn some blood from you. Done a full cholesterol profile. It's called the lipogram. Okay. Checks a good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. Uh, but at 3.4, that's normal. So I wouldn't do anything further. Okay. okay, so with the glucose at 4.6, um, yes. if it's above what, it's not... Um, you know, I would consider above 7 to be abnormal. Okay. It does depend on when you ate, what you ate, those kinds of things as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light blood pressure, glucose fluctuates throughout the day. Okay. But we do have certain cutoffs for it as well, obviously. Okay. okay. Thank you. Cardiovascular disease is considered preventable, provided you actually manage the person's lifestyle. Yeah, so that yeah, means yeah. ensuring that they have adequate diet, they're getting enough exercise yes, and so yes. on, right? okay. So you can actually use exercise and diet to treat things like diabetes, high blood pressure, um, um, high cholesterol and so mm -hmm. on. In fact, you should be doing that. That's the first thing you get taught yeah. in medical school, this dietary modification. Okay. Um, oh, also wanted to ask, um, how would I be able to know uh, my body fat percentage, yeah. my visceral fats, the functionality of my arteries and stuff like that? Well, body fat percentage is something very easy to measure. Okay. Um, there are a couple of ways of doing it, but the most common way probably here is for us to measure your um, skin folds. And we do that using calipers, which I think I have somewhere over here. Okay. Yes, I do. So we measure your body fat in various sites using this device. <coughs> All right. So what would happen is we would pinch the skin okay. and catch that in between. The, oh, the little fat that we might have grabbed and mm -hmm. then measure the, the centimeters oh, over there. Okay. And then those values get entered into a software program or even online using whichever formula you choose to use. Okay. And that'll spit out your body fat percentage. Okay. All right. And you look at that in conjunction with your weight and that'll tell you, you know, how much of that is lean body mass, how much of that is you know, fat free mass and so on. So that is a very quick and easy way to measure your body fat percentage. Okay, I would like to do one if possible. What I can do is arrange for our sports massage therapist okay. who happens to be a strength and conditioning trainer to do it for you or even a dietitian can do that for you. Okay. 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 There was another question that you had asked me. There, um, the oh, your arteries. Fats and arteries, yes. Right. Um, where do we start with that? So, start with the basics, I suppose. Okay. Ensure that the patient doesn't have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. Gut. In other okay. words, those things that will affect your arteries, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you do that by examining the patient. So when I examine you, what I would look for is um, ensuring that the blood is flowing everywhere it should. So we feel the pulses in the feet and in the neck, make sure they're, um, they're, they're prominent enough for us to feel them. Okay. Listen to the heart, make sure the heart sounds are normal, check the blood pressure. Sometimes I also listen to the neck to check if there's any narrowing of the arteries over there. Okay. Um, if we don't find any of those, you don't really need to dig any deeper unless there's a strong family history or if there are risk factors like the patient is a smoker or anything like that. Okay. Okay. We could do an ECG as well, which specifically looks at heart function. So it tells us, is the heart rhythm normal? Is it doing what it's supposed to do, okay. all right? Um, then we can go into blood tests. So there aren't specific blood tests for checking just artery function per se, all mm -hmm. right? But some of the blood tests that we do to give us an idea of cardiovascular function, apart from what I mentioned in the cholesterol and diabetes, would be something called the HSCRP, uh, high sensitivity CRP, okay. all right? Okay. That is one mark of inflammation and sp specifically um, measures if there's inflammation, and how that relates to cardiovascular risk, okay. okay? There are other tests that we can do to look at the heart, specifically if you suspect that there might be injury to the heart, but there's no one test that will necessarily tell you that your arteries are functioning okay. 100%. Okay. There are other tests we can do on specific arteries, like a Doppler, which is actually an ultrasound mm -hmm. that you put on an artery, like the carotid over here, and it can measure the flow of blood through the carotid artery, so we can see if it's narrowed or anything like that. Okay. But, um, Short of us sort of going in and looking, there isn't much more that you can do. Yeah. What is visceral fat? What is visceral fat? Yeah. Visceral fat is the fat surrounding your organs and it's predominantly the fat um, in your abdomen. That is how we do a waist circumference. So when we talk about patients being obese, yes, we look at general obesity. In other words, are you just sort of holistically fat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But we also look at your abdominal fat because mm -hmm. this is what's important. This is what the, this is where the metabolically active fat is sitting okay. and this is what's contributing to high cholesterol and high blood pressure and diabetes over here. Okay. Okay. So we p place a lot of emphasis on it because it is that that gives us the indicator that maybe your overall health isn't in good standing. Okay, okay, 
Oh, so could um, your having um, I don't know if I would say percentage like a high vesicle fat percentage yes. would it lead to maybe um, damaged liver or something? It it could. It, I would, let me rather say this in itself probably not. But what we would look at is why. Why do you have high visceral fat? Okay. okay. It, it could be that you have concomitant hepatic steatosis, which means fatty liver. So there's literally fat sitting in your liver. All okay. right. But we look at the patient holistically. And, and if, for example, you consume copious amounts of alcohol, all right, mm -hmm. or above what is accepted levels of alcohol, let's okay. say, you can get fatty liver. And we often find associated with that that patients would have disease of lifestyle as well. Okay. So it's not necessarily in itself the visceral fat causing the liver problem, okay. but everything that has led to this yeah, problem that is causing that makes it. Sense. That makes sense. So would there be an indication of like a a high vesicle fat or a liver oh, symptoms. What would yeah. someone notice if they have such um, for the liver specifically? Yeah, for the liver specifically. Um, it depends on the degree. All right. Okay. So generally speaking, you don't really feel discomfort over here, but you could have jaundice. Jaundice is when the skin particularly the whites of the eyes and the soft palate and the mouth turns yellow okay. and that is because the gallbladder can't release the bile adequately so that's one sign that you could look at um, we consider pale hands uh, sorry not pale hands red hands so uh, we call it palmyra theme if your hands are quite red that could be a sign of, of liver failure all right okay. um, you can get what we call telangiectasia little veins on the chest Okay, mm -hmm. that can be a sign that there's oh, something going on with the liver. Okay. Fluid retention as well, so swelling of the legs or of the body. And if you push it, it stays indented. Oh, that okay. could be a sign. Okay, how many servings of fruit do you eat per day? How many? Servings of fruit. Um, two to three. Two to three, okay. So your options are either one to two or three to four. Okay. Which one? So I would say three to four because I eat a lot of fruit. <laughs> okay. Um, how many servings of vegetables do you eat per day? One to um, two, three to four, five or more. Three to four, because I'm plant based. Okay. Or, or more. <laughs> even more than that. Yeah, even more. Cause so that's... five or more a day. Five or more. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, how many days a week are you physically active at home, work, or leisure on average in the past month? Days a week. Yeah. Um, so your options are once a week, twice a week, three times a week, four or more. I'll times say a week. three times a week. Okay. On those days, how many? Oh, sorry, how much time do you spend being physically active? Um, thirty minutes to forty-five. Perfect. That's an option. Okay. Calculating. Right. So, as I said, your blood pressure. You know, when we did it the second time, was normal. Yeah. So I wouldn't be worried about that. I think the first time you mentioned you injured your finger and you were a little anxious, I suppose. So it's going to be a bit high when we do it. Okay. Um, but now it's normal. Your BMI is twenty-nine point eight. BMI stands for body mass index. Do you mm -hmm. know what that means? Um, I believe it determines if you're obese or not, but I don't know the full... Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I think you okay. didn't on there. It's, it's basically a measure of your weight to your height. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. obviously someone who weighs the same as you, but is taller than you, will look very different. Okay. okay. So the normal range for BMI is 18.5 to 24.9. 25 and up is considered high, and at 29, yours is pretty yeah, high. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think you would agree as well that we need to do something about that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, just the one area where body mass index is misleading is when you have someone who's bulky with muscle. Okay. They would tend to weigh a little bit more because muscle is heavier than fat. Yeah. So BMI isn't completely accurate, but when we look at it in conjunction with your waist circumference yeah. Yeah. and overall you know, health status and so on, we can mm -hmm. see that it is a true reflection maybe of what is going on physiologically. Mm -hmm. So we will address your, your weight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The cholesterol went through that already. That's normal at 3.4, less than 5 is what we want. And less than 7 or for discovery purposes, I suppose less than 7.8 is considered normal for your sugar, yes. and yours is 4.6. Yeah. So, all in all, it doesn't seem terrible. Okay. That's good news for you. <laughs> yeah, that's we amazing. have about 10 minutes left, mm -hmm. and then we can interpret the HIV result. Okay. Um, we want to do it within 15 minutes of actually dipping that little stick into the buffer solution over there. Okay. So let's wait a couple of minutes, and then I'll give you that result. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let it move. Let it move.